Hi guys, so this morning I got a DM from a Bricks user, also using Jet Engine, asking me how you display related content or related data using the Jet Engine relationships. Uh, and I think that it'd be pretty similar to ACF, Metabox, all that sort of stuff. So regardless of what you use, the concept's the same. Um, the exposed methods might be a little different. Now, traditionally with um, Jet Engine to use the relationship data, you would use the Jet Engine Query Builder. So you go to the Query Builder and you would create a query which then displays the related data or the related uh, users, posts, whatever, um, to another entity. Uh, you create that query and then you loop through that query. But it's actually easier than that in Bricks. We don't actually need to create a custom query unless you want to do something different. If you want to do some different ordering or filtering, uh, then you need to create a custom query in Query Builder. If you just want to output whatever information is there and loop through it, you can do that directly in Bricks Loop Builder. You don't need to create a separate query for that. I want to show you what I mean by that. I've got a... BakerPress uh, set of uh, posts here. And what I want to do is I want to, as an example, I want to add a relationship to my users so I can look at um, contributors to a post. So if we've got 50 users here, I've only got two in this demo site. If we've got 50 users on this post, three people might have contributed to it. That one, five people might have contributed to it. And we want to be able to relate those users to those posts. And then we want to display those related users when that post is being displayed. So how we would do that is by creating a relationship first in Jet Engine. Again, ACF, Metabox, whatever you use. So I'm going to add a new relation. I'm going to call this post uh, contributors. Post contributors. That's nice, nice and simple. So our parent object is our post. Again, this could be an a could be anything. In here it can be so many things, custom posts, users, taxonomies, whatever you want. So we're just going to leave it on posts, but our child object we want to be users because we want to relate users to posts as post contributors. All right, the rest of this, all we have to do is change that to many to many, the relationship type, because what we want is a post to be able to have multiple users as contributors but those users can also belong to multiple posts as contributors. So we need a many to many here. The rest of this is just controlling uh, where you can add or, or delete entities. So we're going to leave that as it is and hit the add relation. So to create this relationship, this relationship all we need is a title, our parent object, our child object, and a relationship of many to many. That's it. Go to our posts. And now if we look at our first post here and scroll to the bottom, we'll see a Jet Engine relationship meta box down here. So we're going to connect the admin user to this one. Second one, we're just going to connect the um, test user. And on the third one, we'll connect both. Okay, so that's our relationships done. Now we just have to work out how to display them. So the first part of this is we're just going to look at the structure in Bricks, and then I'll come back and explain how to actually get the data for the user for displaying. So let's look at the pages and bring up my scratch page here. Should be empty. Yep, I'm going to add a section uh, on that container. We'll just add a little bit of row grab, so 30. Chuck a title on here for that relationships. All right, and then we're going to add a block under that. And this is going to be our grid, so we'll call this the post grid. Post grod. And make that a grid with a 30 gap and repeat 
uh, maybe four. So we're going to have four posts. And then under that, we're going to actually create another block. And this will be our post. On that post, let's chuck a bit of a row gap, make it say 15. Put a title on it. We don't need it dead. Title, we'll make that our post title. We're going to put another that little sort of basic text box. Call it contributors. Oops. Uh, by the way, I would normally turn these into ULs and LIs um, and style them properly, but I'm just for this demonstration, I'm just showing you how it works. Uh, semantically, it makes more sense for lists to be lists, so this should be an LI, sorry, UL, LI, uh, and then we should have another UL and the LI for the contributors down here. But all right, now you're going to add another basic text under here, and on that basic text, we're going to call that contributors. All right, now that is our structure. So I'm going to look at now turning that post grid into a loop. So enable our query loop on the posts, which can be standard posts. Let's make it 12 so it fits nicely into our four column grid. So we've got 12 posts there. Okay, on the contributors, we need to also add a block or a div, whatever you want, stick that contributors under there, and we want to turn this into a loop as well. And this is where it gets really good. So we don't need to create a, uh, a Jet Engine um, query and query builder because they automatically make these available as a relation in our drop down for our query type here. So we've got J relation post contributors. How easy is that? So I don't need to go and create a custom query unless I want to filter or order or do something with that with those contributors. This is just going to get the all of the contributors in the order that they're actually added. Okay, so that's going to be my block and in the contributors now. Now we need to work out how do we actually put something here. Now what are we actually going to put there? If I would put just do a test and have a look at this in the front end, we can see on the first one I've got test, test, and then test, test. Why is that? Because the first one we added the administrator, second one we added the test user, third one we added the test and administrator. So that's why we've got two there. Now we need to figure out how do we output the data here. Now, importantly, when we created this relationship, let's go back to the relationship and just talk about that for a bit. When we created this relationship, We created a relationship between the posts and users. So these here are not going to be posts. They're going to be users. So we can't just go into the builder and use these standard placeholders for post title, post ID, etc. We go down to users. That's to do with the current author of the main post. Okay, this has got nothing to do with the metadata relationship that we've added. So we need to figure out what data do we have to work with. Now, this is the second part of this, which might be a little bit complex for some, but this requires figuring out what data you've got and then work figure out how to work with it. So to do that, what I've done in, I use a scripts organizer and I've got a script here in scripts organizer you can use wp code box uh, whatever you like to use it doesn't really matter so i've got a function here which uses bugfoo so it's a free plugin for wordpress uh, and if bugfoo is enabled then it's going to log out whatever we send to it and it is going to appear in the chrome DevTools console okay i've now added this function here which is uh, i'm going to zoom in maybe if i can there we go uh, WP debug current loop item. All this is going to do is get the current bricks query loop and then send it to this debug function. So if bug foo is enabled, then this is going to output the current query loop object to my Chrome DevTools console. So let's grab a copy of that function name. 
head back to our scratch here and I'm going to put in brackets here echo which is out to echo a PHP function and that function name save that and then have a look in our front end and we can see now in the Chrome DevTools console, we now have an array of context as the debug current loop item, and the data is a WP user. So what we've got here to work with is not a WP post, it's a WP user. So we need to be aware of that. So I'm going to just copy that WP user and do a quick search on Google for, for that. Have a look at our WordPress repository for that. I've already looked at this. So I'm going to rush through this. If we scroll down there, we'll find that there's some functions here for the uh, WP user. There's nothing to get the actual username, but there's a general get function here to retrieve a property or a meta key. So let's hit the get. And the way this works, it's WP user static get whatever the string is. Okay. Now, if we look back at our console here, our WP user, this is the data that we've got for that user. Okay, what we want is the display name. So what we want to call is WP user display name. All right, so now what we need is a function which is going to get the display name from a WP user. So this is where I've added another script here. I've called it uh, just, just get rid of that extra object word. So it's loop WP user function. So if you've got a WP user object, this is going to be functions to use that in a loop. All right. So what I've created is a function called WP WP user. So that's going to be the function here. And I'm going to set the display name as my default. So if I don't provide a display name, I'm going to get the display name. First thing I'm going to do is get my current bricks loop object. Okay. If it's not a WP user, then I'm going to return an error to say you've used this in the wrong place. All right. If it is a WP user, we're going to get that WP user item and we're going to call the get function to get that display name in this case. And then we're going to return that. So if I now copy this name here, come back to my editor and I put my function in there for WP user get, hit enter, we'll hit save, go back to my front end. I now have admin, test user, test user and admin. So this is pulling the related users and displaying them, but you've got to do a little bit of work. You've got to figure out first what object have I got to work with? How does that object work? And then you've got to create a function here to actually return that. Um, if I want something different, if I wanted the uh, user login, I would then, on this function here, I would put, I think it's user login. I think there is a method for that. Uh, sorry, a property for that. Let's have a look at that. Yep, then we've got the user login. That's basically it. all we need to do to be able to work out what data we've got work out what functions we need to process that data and then output it in bricks. Uh, again, if it's a post, you don't need to do any of this. If you've got a post being returned, like if I create a relationship between one post type and another post type, this stuff here is going to be a post and I can use those standard uh, placeholders there because it's a post type. So. Yeah, so I hope that makes sense, and if it's useful to you, hit the subscribe and hit the like. Thanks for listening.